Okay, so let's take a look at some different principles of art using basic shapes. And today we'll use just our basic product box that I just cut into uh, the artist trading card size pieces. Only these are cut in random size pieces. We'll use the solid side so that you're not confused by the color aspect of it, which is an element, the element of color. The elements of art are line, value, color, form, space, and texture. Now some people separate form and shape, but they're really two opposites of the same thing. A form is three-dimensional and a shape is flat. So we're going to use shapes today to look at the principles of art, which is how we organize the stuff in our picture plane. So let's pretend like this surface here is our picture plane. Our first principle of art is balance. Balance has two different kinds, symmetrical and asymmetrical. So for instance, if we just had two shapes, we now have a symmetrical balanced picture. Okay, it could be vertically or horizontally. So still balanced. Now, if we want asymmetrical balance in our picture, we want the picture to feel like it's off balance, then we're going to create something that is not the same on both sides. So if we had, say, something here in our picture and something here in basic shapes. Now, don't forget those things, those shapes could be faces, they could be trees, they could be flowers. So think of whatever you're making in your picture in terms of a shape right now, just to think about how balance works. Okay, another example of asymmetrical balance is if you would have two shapes that were of different size. The next principle of art is emphasis. Emphasis is like the Mona Lisa, when one part of your picture is more important than the rest. So think of whatever it is that you're drawing as the superstar, as the uh, actor that is the star of the show. And all of the things that are around that superstar are the supporting actors or actresses. So let's say that we have a few other players in the game. We have one superstar in our picture, the emphasis, and the other parts are smaller or less significant. Sometimes even the superstar is brightly colored while the other supporting actors, the things that are not the emphasis, are more dimly colored. Now this isn't to say that you have to have your superstar in the middle. You could have your emphasis happen in the corner with all of the smaller pieces ranging around it. So think maybe Starry Night where you have the building and uh, the trees but you have other stuff happening that's smaller and less significant than the main thing. So we still have brighter, bigger emphasis. Brighter, bigger emphasis, brighter, bigger emphasis, wherever it is, everything else is smaller and less significant than your superstar in your picture. The next one, rhythm. Rhythm is a repeating pattern, movement, like clapping your hands. <laughs> However you place your visuals on your picture plane in a repeating pattern is rhythm. So we create rhythm in a repeating pattern. It can be as complicated or as simple as you like. Okay? Rhythm. Now you could use more than one design principle at a time. So if you wanted to have rhythm with emphasis, then you might have this type of a design. Just make a plan. Okay, but you could do rhythm with objects as well that are forms. For example, we can create rhythm in a collage by using an element several times over and over again that creates a pattern. So rhythm with forms or rhythm with shapes. It's still the principle 
of design that we use because people like to see something more than once. When you repeat an element, it feels good. It's like clapping your hands to music that you enjoy. It's like dancing. It's movement. So rhythm can be a great principle of design to utilize. Okay, the next principle of art is variation. Variation can be very helpful because sometimes when an artist uses rhythm too much, it's boring. So an example of variation is variety. The definition is a variety of the same element. So if we're using a shape and we use a variation of that shape, but it's still all sort of rectangular, geometric, then it's a little bit more exciting to your viewer than if you just used one repeating pattern. Okay, variation. Now variation work in a variety of objects just as well as it does with a variety variation of shape. Here are some pieces of driftwood. They're all pieces of driftwood. So we have a variety within a group. They're forms because they're three-dimensional, but a lot more interesting than if you were looking at a piece of driftwood that was similar in shape and size. These have variation. Variation helps keep your viewer interested in continuing to look at your artwork. There's variation, a variety within a group using forms. Opposition is when you use an element that is opposite from another element. So let's say, for instance, we had one big square, and then opposite to it, we made small, thin lines, like so. So we're going opposite opposition from the other direction. Opposition. It's when something clashes. It would be even more if I created some vertical stripe right next to horizontal stripe. Okay, opposition is opposites. You can think of opposition in terms of concepts as well, like fire and ice, day and night, dog and cat. Anything that creates a conflict, something that sort of hammers up against the other thing in a real obvious stop motion. So here we have the lines that stop against the lines that go the other direction. So the principle here of opposition is being used by the element of line. We're using lines going vertically and lines that are going horizontally. Okay. Another way you could show opposition is if you had objects that were in sharp contrast to each other as well. So if I used a man-made object next to a natural object, the contrast is both a conflict in concept as well as conflict in the way that they are arranged on your paper. Also think about using geometric shape with organic shape. Something that is geometric and something that's organic. Opposition. Transition is our other principle of design. Transition is when something changes shape in your design. Let's say for instance, if we had this shape and it makes this transition from these shapes into another shape. So this is transitioning from this shape to this shape, to this shape, to this shape. In artwork, when you make a transition from something to something else slowly, it kind of pulls your viewer's eye around and into the piece more. Another example of transition, we have the shape turns into form driftwood and then into the form of driftwood that has the face creates a transition. One thing you can do is to go look for some random things around your house. After you have found those things, then try out arranging them in the different principles of art that we just talked about. How could you organize them? Try yourself.